Right, hey guys, Luton here. So, this evening I was doing some editing, just came across this article through Twitter. I'm often sort of keeping an eye on news stories on Twitter and browsing around other things whilst I'm in between doing bits and pieces just to see what's happening. And see this piece about Command & Conquer, The Rivals, which of course you will remember was the incredibly popular preview that we saw recently um, at just before E3 when Battlefield 5 was being revealed and uh, you know there's a lot of excitement about this game, this mobile game um, because you know one thing that RTS players have been screaming for is a Command & Conquer mobile game. No. But seriously, this is just a nightmare of an article. It's, it's exactly, it's a, it's a perfect example of the kind of thing that I keep highlighting again and again about why I have such a disdain for kind of marketing because it's just absolute bullshit. It's, it's so insulting. This idea that they're trying to perpetuate through this article is that, you know, you've made too quick of a judgment of this and that actually it's really amazing and blah, blah, blah. I, look, I'm going to be straight up now. I am happy to put my sort of money on the table and say I haven't played this and I haven't downloaded it. I quite honestly don't want to waste the time in downloading this and then playing to see whether I was correct. Because you can just look at gameplay and that should be enough. It's mind-boggling that they can have the audacity to somehow try and suggest that actually, no, no, you gamers who have got, like, so much experience have made a misjudgment. And forget about the fact that nearly every single YouTube video of Command & Conquer Rivals has, like, a 99% dislike ratio. But yeah, that's right. It's the gamers who've made the misjudgment, not EA. That actually, your knowledge of the fact that the concept of putting an RTS game into a mobile is probably one of the biggest crimes you could make when it comes to game development. And yeah, this isn't an RTS in the standard sense, it's a hex-based game. And it's like, that's fine. However, it's not something that I would ever want Command & Conquer to be, because Command & Conquer is a definitive RTS. And if you can't understand that, and not only can you not understand that, but then trying to somehow justify it, it's transition in that way by saying oh we want to introduce it to new players or something on these lines it's so insulting that it beggars belief and then not only that but as you'll see in this article they try to go through and highlight the sort of i would say false positives of what it really is but then at the very end they fall back on the classic the classic it's free so what are you complaining about you hear this all the time with, with when battlefield do updates so it's free it's free you can't complain if it's free but you're missing the point entirely. Whether it's paid for or free is irrelevant. It's about the core focus of what it was they were trying to achieve. This is why when some producers who never have a bad thing to say about EA were saying out and out about the Star Wars Battlefront updates and how it was a super positive thing that they made all these changes and they were listening to the community and blah 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 blah. It's bullshit. There might be a small modicum of reasoning as to why they were making those updates, but quite honestly, how stupid are you? They made those big updates with Star Wars Battlefront 2 because they had to make them. Not because they suddenly had some ethical change of heart. Oh, I've seen the light. Of course, how silly of us, how silly of us. They had to update and change the game to save face. That is why they did it, not because they cared about gamers' experiences. Because if they cared about gamers' experiences, they wouldn't have done any of the stupid bullshit they did from the start. Simply saying, oh, it's a free update, so you can't have a negative opinion of it in any shape or form, is nonsense. Because the core essence is not about, is it paid or free? It's about the motivation of what are they trying to get to? What are they trying to do? And um, like with the Star Wars Battlefront update, the core focus was not about improving the player experience, it was about repairing damage and saving face. And they've continued to do that going forward into Battlefield 5. It, suddenly everything has this overtly, almost nauseating positiveness. 
every stranger's a friend you haven't met yet. It's this mind, it's like, it's such bollocks. Like, just make the game and then let us decide. But this constant, overwhelming, nauseating positivity just kills me. So keeping all of that in mind, coming back to Command and Conquer, the rivals, but really any game, quite honestly, you've got to try and read between the lines. Now you're probably just gonna say, LT, look, it's just a silly marketing editorial piece, don't worry about it, blah, blah. No, it does. I saw it and it really triggered me immediately because I was like, what do they think of the gamers? You know, like this is why I say it's bad. It's insulting even for EA because what do they think of people? Who are they aiming this at? Are they trying to convince people who are actual RTS players? Are they trying to convince people that are serious gamers that they've somehow made a misjudgment? Or is it aimed at people that have maybe listened to RTS players and actual gamers and thought, oh, well, these guys are talking bad about this game, so I guess I'll give it a miss. Are they trying to target those people? Because even then, isn't that kind of like slightly leading people down the wrong path? And then also, like I say, at the very end, they're talking about, oh, it's free, so you should just download it. Just download it. What have you got to lose? What have you got to lose? Again, you come back to that classic South Park deal, all about when it's like a free game and nothing's free. They're aiming at that small demographic of people who are no doubt at some point going to spend out on it. And let's be clear, right now in this pre-alpha, what I have read is that there are no microtransactions in this Command & Conquer Rivals game. But come on, you cannot be seriously telling me that EA is making a free-to-play mobile game which will not have microtransactions. And not just microtransactions, but the kind of microtransactions that are the bad kind of microtransactions. The mobile game microtransactions. If it does not, I would eat my hat, okay? It is almost a foregone conclusion because they are going down that free to play model, free to play game. Low, it's just it's just it's, it's just classic, classic, classic bullshit. And that is why this is so incredibly insulting, not just to Command and Conquer, but to gamers, because they are trying to somehow make out that this is a legitimate game or that it's going to be good or whatever. It's a shitty mobile game and it literally pisses all over the fantastic genre-defining title, which is Command and & Conquer. And the fact that they have the audacity to do this is beyond belief. And it's really sad, you know, because I actually think that mobile games, there's a huge amount of possibility in what you could actually do with a mobile game. You know, when you think about it, it's a great platform that you can just take with you wherever you go to you know there's all sorts of cool and there are some cool games there's some cool games you know you can get final fantasy tactics there's a variety of fun puzzle games all sorts of stuff like this it suits that it suits puzzle games and all these kind of things but rts or or even hex i mean to, to a degree i could actually imagine a hex based game across a battlefield or something working but not to the weird scaled constricted claustrophobic nature that this rivals game has it beggars belief let's have a look at this detail here so they're talking with Greg Black, who I think works on Command & Conquer Rivals. They sort of dance around it a little bit until about midway through, but anyway. Yeah, so they ask about like how he got into it, and he says, Back in 2001, I had a friend working on Command & Conquer, brought me some testing on Red Alert 2, took a job testing it in QA, etc. been working on games. Um, says he was a huge, huge Command & Conquer fan. First PC game was Command & Conquer. Grew up with strategy games. Uh, played a bunch of Military Madness. Uh, Command & Conquer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, working on Red Alert 2. How did you transition from QA? Initially started to do some production work, etc. Yeah, okay, we got it. So then they asked what spurred the decision to bring Command & Conquer back as mobile as opposed to PC. When the iPad first came out, they looked at it and were like, this would be a great thing to play a strategy game on. I can understand that. Uh, but he says it's been a long time since then and nobody has really made a good RTS on mobile devices. I think we're looking at where players are now. There are a ton of people playing strategy games on mobile, but none of them are really getting that true RTS experience probably because it's on a mobile. He says we think that by building that true RTS experience on the mobile, true RTS experience? We can introduce potentially more people to this genre that has kind of stagnated for a little bit on the PC. I think it's stagnated because as much as it was loved in the day, back in the day, like arena games, it's kind of had its day. And like I say, I, would, I say that with no disrespect because I love Command & Conquer and I love those games and I still enjoy playing stuff like Company of Heroes, for example. But I think they tried a few different methods with that game and after some time, games have kind of had their day and it's kind of like you should just treat them with respect and leave them be. He says, we know that real-time strategy games are special and awesome and this is a way to get that experience into more players' hands than we otherwise would be able to on the PC. 
So reading between the lines, we wanted to put something out there which we're going to be able to just shovel out to a ton of people because the kind of people we're aiming at are not the kind of people that are going to be playing on PC. But do you see how those two things kind of contradict one another? Because in the first hand, they're sort of talking about how much respect they have for RTS games and getting a true RTS experience. But then in the second part, they're talking about, you know, we just want to get that experience into people's hands but people that wouldn't be playing on the PC. So the two things kind of just don't really go together. It's, they seem to be at odds with each other. Or perhaps they're operating under the delusion that somehow they're going to be able to deliver a comparable RTS experience from a PC onto a mobile, and that somehow that's going to, I don't know, invigorate people that play only mobile games to want to play really intense micro RTS games. I, I don't see it. I don't see that myself. Then they go on saying, once you got your hands on Command & Conquer Rivals, your earlier scepticism went away. Wow, that's, that's really impressive. This is why I got a bit confused here. It's like, does he work for them? Does he not work for them? Like, why do, is he getting his hands on it? I, I don't understand. What is it exactly you saw when you got into the nitty gritty? He says, well, to get into the nitty gritty, once I saw the impact that the hexes have on unit control, the ability to precisely control where your units are going. Yeah, what, by pressing and then making them go there? Um, it doesn't screw the whole thing up. I don't know what that means. That was really exciting. It felt like an RTS experience. Bored down to this five minute segment. The fact that there were harvesters in the game. Okay. The fact that there was an economy. I think that's pretty loose. Um, but where you could actually actively harass, you could build or not build, depending on what you wanted to do in the game. I played other mobile strategy games that are not RTS in the way that I think of one. You don't have direct unit control so you don't have as much economy manipulation, things like that. I, I feel like saying economy a lot makes it sound like it's really detailed when from everything I've seen, it's just not at all. So it says for me, that was very exciting because it felt like a 40 minute Command and Conquer or Starcraft 1v1 battle boiled down to three, four or five minutes. Moving on, what would you say are some of the core elements RTS needs to get right in order to be successful in the genre? The one big thing is unit control, and that's really hard to do. Yeah, of course, in RTS games, having control of your units specifically, moving them very quickly, is incredibly important, because very often making those micro movements is what allows some of your units to survive versus enemy units, so it's absolutely critical. Is that what's going to be happening in this game? I immensely doubt it. Good pathfinding and good collision management are things that on some of our past Command & Conquer games we struggled with. It is something that the Blizzard games do really well and I think it's something that Rivals has done really well. But continuing to work on having a lot of tactical depth in terms of having lots of places where players can skill differentiate from each other. So lots of little micro tricks, things that you might only do 1 in 10 or 1 in 100 games, but they're there and you can do them. You can really show how much better you are than another player. Accessibility is another thing that's really working a lot in Rivals' favour. Yeah, what a shocker. It's a very intuitive to pick up and play game. Yeah, well, that tends to be the case when all you've got to do is press where you want things to go and be. Especially for an RTS game, having a game you can develop mastery in, but that's easy to sort of pick up. Oh my god, do you remember when I was talking about this the other day, how I was saying that the, the phrase easy to pick up but hard to master? You remember how I was saying that this was a phrase which was being banded around in the past like 12 months and that now it's got to the point where it's total bullshit? And I actually realised that this phrase which was being more and more prevalent of it's easy to pick up and it's accessible but it's hard to master. It's just a way of saying 70 to 80% of players haven't got a fucking clue what they're doing, but there's like 10 or 20% of players who are at a normal level of competency. The phrase master just now means you are able to play with a reasonable understanding of the game. The rest are headless chickens. That's what they mean when they say it's easy to play, hard to master. It doesn't mean it's easy to play and hard to master. It means that if you pick up the game and haven't got a fucking clue what you're doing, you'll be able to move around and do the bare bones basics of sort of moving, interacting, and that is about it. But anybody above that is somehow considered having mastered the game, meaning you are actually conscious of larger things going on than yourself you're probably able to communicate you're probably able to survive for more than a one to one kd ratio so it's this kind of nonsense i hate that phrase now 
I think it's meaningless bullshit. And to be clear, it's a phrase that I myself have used in videos in the past when I was still on the misunderstanding that it actually meant what it was supposed to mean. But now I am more than convinced that that is not the case. And it's a phrase that sometimes people I'm sure use thinking that that is actually what it's supposed to be, but it's not, it's gibberish. So yeah, a mobile, let's call it RTS game is accessible because you know, when it's point and click, it's gonna be pretty bloody accessible. It says on the strategic layer, uh, you have a sort of build order, economic decision making. Yeah, that's pretty core to most RTS, right? A build order. So you're choosing what to build in order. That's going to have ramifications. He says, do I want to be super passive? Try to build up a big economy so I can end the game with a bunch of heavy units. That sort of econ economic play style and strategic layer decision making is really important. Having both of those things in equal proportion is really important for a great RTS game. I mean, yeah, there's many RTS games which are like that, where, you know, depending on how you want to play, do you want to kind of do like sort of building up your economy through the game and then rush them with a ton of heavies at the end? It, you know, when you play something like Company of Heroes, that's very, very much the case. You know, do you want to try and overwhelm them early on with weak stuff and just try to dominate? Or do you want to kind of build it up all the way through? But again, you know, boiling it down to its simplest, the way in which that translates into a game like Rivals in a mobile sense is completely incomparable to the way in which an actual RTS game works with the sort of push-pull, you know, micro skirmishing battles that you're going to have. You can't put those two things together. They're just, they're just not comparable. And they talk a bit about alpha feedback and, you know, it's great to learn from your community, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what would you say to the fans that are hesitant about Rivals? I would say just give it a try. It's free to play. There's no reason not to download it until later when we introduce heavy microtransactions. It doesn't say that, but that's what will happen. When the game comes out, give it a shot. I think for a lot of those fans, they're going to find a lot to like here. If you're into the multiplayer, into the heads up 1v1 competitive aspect of RTS, I think this is a really great game for that. Right, I've kind of ranted on through this video. Uh, that's what they had to say. What do you think? Tell me down in the comments below as per usual. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, helps me out, helps the channel. Thanks for listening today. And uh, as you could probably tell, this was something which pretty pissed me off. Uh, it's pretty unusual that I get very impassioned and almost angry, but uh, I just kind of randomly stumbled across this article and I just kind of read through it and I was just like, fuck me. Like, you know, it just, uh, I really try my best to not be overtly negative about some things, but sometimes, they make it really bloody hard.